Howdy folks. Good afternoon. How are we all doing? It is Friday, September 17th, 2021. I'm once again over at the Stump Pass Beach State Park. However, the nice thing is, you know, considering that it's a bit cloudy today. Sorry, I had to fix the hair. <laughs> considering it's a little cloudy today, it's actually a bit cooler out too so that's why I'm actually wearing a shirt this time but and the sand is actually tolerable to walk on for a change but as part of it being Friday that's usually regarded as the flora Fridays and I also wanted to make a video in honor of the pre celebration of National Public Lands Day which basically honors the public lands throughout the country and usually in doing so litter is cleaned up and today I'm basically trying to do my part for that since most of the local events for the cleanups are in the morning and I have good old work sometimes that gets in the way but you gotta make, you gotta get the paycheck right so, without further ado, I want to point out some flora that I found that while I was out here. So, here we go. Alrighty. So, this is already marked, but what we're looking at is something called a Hercules Club. Now, a Hercules Club is basically like a native tree found in Florida. It's often known... That's a Hercules Club by the fact that when you touch along its bark here, there's a lot of thorns nearby. And that usually serves as a protection for the bark itself. Now, oftentimes when you look at the leaves here, they're usually directly opposite of each other. Like this one right there. Now, if I pick a leaf, which I am right now. If I crush it and I smell it, it produces a bit of a citrusy scent. kind of reminds you of smelling oranges. Now what's neat about chewing the leaves is it actually helps promote uh, numbing you know, of the mouth. You know, especially if you're experiencing pain, for instance. Actually, it tells you that, too. It's known as the toothache tree. But yeah, this has been used widely, especially by the Native Americans who were in this area. So then, I noticed, too, as I was walking along, I found some more flora that was nearby. Okay. So to my left, right here, We've actually got something called the bay cedar. This is a well-known evergreen shrub found in the state. Now, what's actually fascinating is since they produce so much seeds, like basically a few thousand, and they're tiny, They and since they're near the oceans, they have a capability of spreading to other parts of the world. But with that being said... It is still native to this part. So they're usually characterized by having clusters. And within the cluster, there are several leaves. I mean, probably just looking at this little bunch, there's probably at least up to 20. Now, it's often believed, too, when you crush the leaves, it kind of gives off like a cedar scent. And that's how it really gets its name of bay cedar, even though it isn't really a true cedar by any means. You, you would find more of your cedars the further up north you go. But, yeah, they actually do produce a fruit. I think it's already past that time, or we just haven't gotten to that time quite yet. But I believe that their fruits are indeed edible as well. 
but yes and these are even list i think i mentioned this already but these are actually listed as endangered in the state and these are excellent plants to use for preventing any further beach erosion as well since typically when it comes to habitats they mostly prefer dunes okay so next one noticed as i was also walking by found these red berries right here some of you actually already may know what it is these are actually wild coffee now you may be wondering for those of you not familiar with the plant does it is it really used for brewing coffee no it's not as a matter of fact hate to break it to you for you coffee lovers but it's not you can't use it for that by any means because these fruits, or berries I should say, they don't produce caffeine like our normal coffee. So you really want to avoid brewing something like this. But you can indeed eat the berries, but they, they're mostly bland though. So there's really no high use of really eating them by any means. But this plant has been used for several medicinal purposes, whether it be for relieving rheumatism, arthritis, or colds and fevers, and even diarrhea, too. So it really has multiple medicinal use as a whole, especially for our health. And you can even use it as a decoction in a tea as well. But rest assured, you want to avoid <laughs> brewing this to turn it into something like coffee. Because I'm afraid a lot of you will be sorely disappointed in that part. <laughs> okay? So now we got another plant right here. Directly to the left. We've got the white indigo berry right here I notice my voice has changed a little bit <laughs> but the white indigo berry is yet another native shrub found in florida as well now they're very distinguished by usually within each cluster having up to well in this case there's up to six but it can really vary but usually with the leaves usually for every berry you find such as this one you usually will find a pair of leaves and these are also edible too and it's but they haven't fully matured yet now when they fully reach their maturity they'll actually turn into the white color that i speak of and hence that's how it gets its name of white indigo berry as a matter of fact but it's been found that eating the berries and using the plant as well, it's helped to treat particular symptoms such as dysentery. However though, other medicinal uses of the plant doesn't really seem to be highly as known whatsoever. But yes, this is the white indigo berry. So last but not least, to wrap up this video, we noticed this plant right here. You notice like all of these, all this covering? Well, this is essentially one large plant. This is actually something called the Golden Beach Creeper. Or as I like to say it in a New York accent or Bostonian, the Golden Beach Creeper. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Now, oftentimes, they will produce these uh, sort of like a waxy leaf covering. So that's one way you can tell. And yeah, it's, it's like a low-growing mat type of plant, essentially. Because they hardly ever grow like above 
three or four feet. I mean, as you can see, like even that bunch right up there, like right here, that's about getting close to my waist. And that's about it. But these will also produce berries as well. Uh, typically, they're kind of like a yellow or like a golden color. And that's how it really gets its name of golden beach creeper. So actually, give me a second, you guys. I want to see if I can potentially find a berry in the process. So give me just a moment. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So I was actually quite lucky. Here we have the example of that berry that I was speaking of. Now, in terms of like medicinal use, really haven't been able to find much on it at all, unfortunately. But I will still share an article that regards a bit more about the plant. But yeah, that, that's kind of been a struggle to find any more information on that. But yeah, so essentially all of these plants that we've looked at today in terms of the flora, these are all native to the state. So that's good news. I mean, I would certainly hope so, considering that we are at a state park. So they usually want to try their best to keep their native plants as opposed to invasive. So it's a good thing to see, at least. It's so, alright you guys. Hope all of you enjoy your Friday so far. Hope you learned something of value in the video. And as always, Journey on a Journey is once again outwards. And if any of you have a chance to really participate in any volunteer activities regarding National Public Lands Day, it's well worth it as you're, try as you're making a difference for your local environment as well. So that's why I'm trying to do my part right now because unfortunately I will have to work in the morning. So got to make it work, right? All right, you guys. Take care and stay tuned for the future videos. Take care, you guys. See ya.